All right, so today I'm going to call out the scientific community to start stepping up their game in the department of global warming, right? So here's the deal. Arctic is melting at an extremely fast pace, and it that is dependent on the rest of the cycle of the system to do its job properly. So what do we do, right? How do we solve this issue? What we need to do is make boats. They don't even have to be manned by men. They just got to be autonomous and go, right? Using the power of the sun and solar panels, we put a bunch of refrigeration systems inside of them, right? We pump water through them. We keep them moving around, constantly flowing, constantly moving their, their themselves around to, to cool the water the way it's supposed to be cool, right? And then at some point, we get to point B, which is refreezing the <laughs> the oceans of the, the Arctic as they should be. Now, this isn't specifically to help like polar bears. Now, it, it is a beneficial to them, but this is a system that is dependent and has worked for millions of years, specifically in the way that it's been doing. And in the last 2000 years, you know, even in the last, I should say 200 years, we have changed dramatically from one system to the next. And the new system says is everything has started to shift and change in a different way because we're burning fossil fuels, right? The CO2 emissions are going up. And if you really, really think about what happens when you burn those CO2 emissions, you put your hand on top of your car and hold it there for about 20 seconds. You're going to notice there's a huge increase in temperature. Now, times that by the millions of Americans that drive the millions and billions of people around the world that drive and you're going to get some monster heat source. So it's like, it's not even CO2 emissions. I think that are really the problem. It's the fact that we're just burning constantly. Now, if we can get an engine source that's cool and, and runs on less than anything fossil fueled related. So the CO2 emissions don't go up, but we still have a cool system. I think we're going to be okay. But if we can't do that, the best resource of all time to heat and, and cool any object of all time is water. It's water. That's real. This is real. I talked to my, my guy who does my heating and cooling system, right? He is the guy that comes out every time we need, have, we have a problem. He comes out to fix our heater. He comes out to fix our cooler. And when our cooler is having a problem, typically it has to do with the fact that the condenser is just frozen up because of con condensation. Big deal, right? And you know what he says? Give me a cup of water. I'm like, why would I do that? It's, it's a freaking cooler. And he's like, give me a cup of hot water because there's nothing but cold ice built up on the system right now. And what I need is a cup of hot water to melt it because if I let it sit there, it's going to take six hours for this ice to melt. But if I dump some hot water, it's going to take two minutes. And I know this because I have to melt soup all the time. My store gets soup and it's frozen solid, right? And to get to point B for me so I can hand, hand soup over to a customer, I got to melt it down as fast as I can. And what do I do, right? My boss wants to throw it in the microwave because that's, that's really a solution too. It doesn't work half as fast and uses up energy at the same time. But at the same time, I can take hot water that I can submerge this item in for two minutes. Two minutes. I can get soup that's readily available for that microwave so we could heat it in four minutes as opposed to heating it for 25 minutes, you know, in that scenario. It's ridiculous the amount of electricity difference necessary to heat a frozen product as opposed to a product that's already heated up until that mark. Now, why is this thing even, why do I consider this being an option that works, right? Let's really think about this. You have that thermal energy, it's already stored in something, right? In this case, we're trying to cool the ocean. So what do we do? We take that thermal system, we move it around. Just keep circling. That's all it has to do is just keep doing this. It could literally be just an engine running off of the power of the sun every single day, right? It's going to, it's going to cooled the water and it's going to move and that's what it needs to do it has to do this like circular motion so what does that do for us how does that even benefit us and as the the gases are burned 
we heat up the air, which heats up the water. Now, air to water transition for, for heat takes time. It takes a lot of time. But heating and cooling water directly, directly off of a source of energy is a totally different game. So we take those systems, we move them around, and we let them do their thing, right? We put them on their own paths. They can go around there. They do their own thing. And all we have to do at any time is one-up them with Freon when it's necessary, right? Those sources of, of energy will eventually deteriorate because Freon is not infinite. It will leak. It's going to happen. We can find a really good system that'll keep us in the game for a long period of time. But we keep that system running as much as we can. And we cool the water as we go. And why is this good, right? Now, the systems have a tendency to, to move through the surface of the ocean. And sometimes currents bring it down below and, and cool the, the under ocean areas. Now, this has also affected like things like the Great Barrier Reef which is very true. It's ruined the Great Barrier Reef. And we don't know how to exactly fix the problem because a two degree water temperature difference can ruin coral in a big way. Because bacteria levels can spike. It just bleaches the system. It ruins it. So we have to find ourselves a way out of this thing. ASAP. Because the coral essentially keeps the the bacteria at a lower reduced level, right? The pH level goes down. It's alive, right? It absorbs life. My tanks, my fish tanks, I got one that's that's planted, one that's not. The one that's not planted, I got to change the water all the time. It's normal for me. I have to. I have to. Because if I don't, my fish are going to die, right? The pH level spikes up too much. And if I got life in my tank, like in the in the planted tank, it's a totally different game. 100%. So we have to do our best situation possible to cool the water of our planet. Not only to increase the ice on the Arctic to give the polar bears a freaking home to live on, but at the same time, really thinking about it logically, it's the best thing for us to push forward in a certain way in a very logical manner that would suggest we have the tendency and ability to do what we're supposed to do for this planet. So to take boats that are filled with, with refrigeration systems powered by the, the sun itself, right? We got to find a way to make like low energy required systems and put them on a boat and move them around. And the more we can do this, the better off we're going to be. And those boats literally can just ride around in circles for days and it's going to help us in such a big way. But we have to try. We have to try. Some man with some money in his pocket has to go, <laughs> I don't want to die. And I want my kids to go and I want my seeds from my, from my sperm to move forward through this world in a greater wit. But to watch people not do something about this, it baffles me. And for scientists to not think about this as being a possibility in their actions, of how do we solve the problem is, is very minuscule in man's mentality and understanding the world, how it works, and how to solve a solution. Because this is real stuff. If we just have to implement it properly and do it. Otherwise, we are doomed. We are absolutely doomed as a civilization.